All right, what's up guys? Uh, figured I would come back with uh, another video since it's been like over a month. Uh, just been busy and not really feeling like talking about shit. I upload at my own pace. If you don't like it, too bad. Uh, I want to focus on one collection as per like the last few videos. And the one that I want to focus on today is Blasphemy. We're going to kick things off with the demo. Blood Upon the Fucking Altar. This thing is so goddamn good. Uh, if you don't know Blasphemy, fuck you. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, but uh, Blasphemy is the founders of War Metal, if you don't know. They are so fucking good. Uh... I mean, along with Sarcophago, Beharit, uh, a lot of the South American scene, really, could be thrown into pioneering the war metal sound, but when it comes down to the brass tacks, Blasphemy was the uh, kind of founders of it, and this was kind of the beginning of it all with Blood Upon the Altar. This from front to back just slaps I like this more than Fallen Angel of Doom to be honest just because you can hear the guitars better and it's just heavier overall like production wise uh this is actually the Die Hard edition it came with a poster but I had the poster hanging on my wall for a hot minute and I can't I have all the posters that I had hanging on my wall folded up on top of my shelf right now, so I gotta put them back with the records that they came with. But, since this is a Die Hard, it came with a patch, sticker, and it's on red vinyl. Uh, yeah, Blood Upon the Altar, just a ferocious attack, super short. This is like a 45 RPM LP. Um... God, it, it's so hard to... Ex I don't want to explain this because I feel like it's self-explanatory and everybody has heard blasphemy, but I was surprised by the amount of people that never heard Proclamation before my Proclamation video. So, who knows? Um, So, I guess I'll hold some of your hand through it. Just super chaotic, black and death metal. Just... To the umph degree. This is just barbaric, brutal. The best part about these guys, though, is they're not one of those war metal bands that just are a constant, ferocious assault with absolutely no sense of groove or no sense of anything, where it's just a barrage of riffless blast beats. These guys actually have riffs to back it up, which is what I fucking love. Then we got Fallen Angel of Doom. This is an older pressing from like, I want to say 2015. Like this one actually has everything in it. So I just put. It. Iron Bonehead NWN sheet. Well, insert slash lyric sheet. Poster. And this is on black vinyl. But wait, there's more Fallen Angel of Doom. This is a recent press done by NWN and Ross Bay Cult. Everything's the same with this except for two things. And I'll sh just show you the two things that are different. This one was done to celebrate uh, Blasphemy Playing Nuclear War Now Fest Volume 4 which was hosted in Tijuana, Mexico. So you got the poster. 
along with a poster for NWN Fest, which, Christ on a bike, what a stacked fucking lineup. I was considering going, but life happened. And this is on Peyote Trip Vinyl. Was originally called Mexican Cactus Flower, but metalheads are mouth-breathing trogs, and they did not care for the name of that too much. It made sense, though. Mexican Cactus Flower, they're playing in Tijuana. I mean, it all just kind of made sense. But no, metalheads are fucking idiots and have to make a stink about everything. And made one about Fallen Angel of Doom having one... A variant called Mexican Cactus Flower. That's fucking gay. So they renamed it Peyote Trip. Beautiful variant. Sounds great. Super heavyweight, too. Love it. Then moving on, we have the album that I've spent probably the least amount of time with, but it's still a solid one. And I'll explain why I've spent the least amount of time with this one. And it's their third and final full-length album. Gods of War. Uh, It's... Just a whole bunch of songs, for the most part, that are re-recorded from the demo that don't sound as good as the demo, in my opinion. Uh, it's solid. It's got a lot of great tracks on it, especially the ones that are exclusive to this. But it just lacks the balls, in my opinion, that uh, like Blood Upon the Altar has. So this is Die Hard Edition. Came with a poster, once again, folded up on my shelf. Uh, comes with this patch, which is fucking cool, and is on red vinyl. But it's nice to hear some of the demo songs just kind of, like, reworked with, like, new intros and shit like that. Which is kind of one of Blasphemy's gimmicks, is just these really creepy ambient intros. So it's cool to hear songs like Blasphemy and shit like that with new intros added, but yeah. Anyways, moving on. I showed this in my test press video, but I'll just show it quickly again. Live Ritual Friday the 13th. This is with the silk screen cover. And this is the reject test pressing on black vinyl. And the accepted test pressing on purple. This is a really, really fucking raw live album. And I mean fucking raw. Recorded with a pocket recorder. I believe if memory serves correct. I could be wrong on that. And the retail version of Live Ritual Friday the 13th. Love that fucking picture. This is with uh, when Ryan Forrester joined the band. Black vinyl. I'm trying to think if I used the poster with this one or not. It's looking like I did. Yeah, I definitely did. Alright, so I'll have to put the poster back with this one. But yeah, Live Virtual Friday 13th, Super Raw. Highlights from this, for sure, are Black Winds yelling at the audience, Cut the girly screams, we're not the Beatles! That's my favorite moment of this entire LP. It's in between songs. Then we have Victory Son of the Damned, which is a rehearsal for another live show, which is from the same era. This is 2001, and I believe this was 2000 or 2001. Yeah, recorded Friday the 13th, July 2001. This was recorded August 29th, 2001, so it's the same lineup, just... A little bit after 
live ritual show. Front, back. This is the only way you can hear the song Victory Son of the Damned. They have it twice, so nice you get to hear it twice. Uh, did I use the poster that this came with? I did not. Yeah, there was one point in, like, 2021 where this wall was all posters. No flags. So we got that Ross Bay called Eternal. Two LP, with the second LP being etched, which I thought was a really nice touch. I prefer that over, or a silk screening, over just leaving the D side blank if you're going to do a three sided LP. That's just me though. Moving along. Blood Upon the Sound Space. This is another rehearsal. And... <laughs> this was done at Sound Space Rehearsal Studios in uh, Richmond, British Columbia. And... Good God. This is abrasive. This is borderline fucking noise core. Like... No way around it. This is just a simple release. Single LP, no inner sleeve, nothing. Black vinyl. B-side, I believe, is etched. There you go. This is just the Ross Blasphemy recording, hands down. By far, no question about it. If you like Blasphemy, and you like your shit raw, listen to Blood Upon the Sound Space. Kind of terrible artwork, but really, really fucking raw. That's like the only takeaway I have from this. is It's just punishing. Then, we have... Desecration of Sao Paulo Live in Brazilian Ritual Friday the third, uh, third Attack. Jesus Christ. This is another live album, but this one they play Fallen Angel of Doom just in a different order. Which I understand why they did that because they have to close every show with a ritual. Now, this is a really cool set. So, this is an awesome awesome live album. They play it flawlessly, let me say that, first of all. Like, totally flawless. Then, on top of that, you have a bunch of really cool shit, so you get that insert. Poster. Flyer for the show, which, what a stacked lineup. Which actually has directions to the venue on the back. Let me see if... Nah, it won't show. Oh, there you go. And then you get a ticket. And... It's on red vinyl. Now, moving along to the last piece in my collection. I'm sure some of you have seen it in the background. I was able to snag the NWN Fest exclusive Ross Bay Cult set. Some of you may know what this is, some of you may not. This was released for NWN Fest Volume 4, limited to 200 copies. This contains Blood Upon the Altar, Fallen Angel of Doom, and Gods of War, housed in this beautiful high quality canvas bag and as you'll see comes with this flag K 
camouflage layouts. Now this one has no insert or anything, so I'm not gonna go into great detail. So blood upon the altar. Fallen Angel of fucking Doom. This looks so good. Like, props for coming up with this idea of doing a camouflage layout. Weird sheet. And this wasn't supposed to come with a poster, but I got one anyway. And I have a friend that ordered one and he didn't get one of these. So I thought that was fucking rad. I got a fest poster with mine. So I keep that with Fallen Angel. And I'll just show you the center label to one of them because they're all the same. Camouflage center labels. Get in there. For those of you that watch Theo Vaughn, I hope you get that reference. Get in there. Then, last and most certainly not least, Gods of War. Weird sheet. If I was to nitpick, I just wish these were gatefolds, like the full retail pressings, but that's just nitpicking. I, I'm just happy these exist as camouflage records because they're fucking beautiful. This was worth every penny. I am so stoked I got it. Um, I was willing to spend much more when I found out this was going to be released at the festival and I wasn't going. I was willing to buy this from a flipper. because I wanted it so bad. And then it popped up on NWN when I randomly checked, so it was meant to be. So, Camouflage, Ross Bay Cult Eternal. Fucking support Blasphemy, support Nuclear War Now, support Ross Bay Cult, support the Underground, support War Metal. It's the shit. If you don't like it, too fucking bad. Uh, and that's it for this video. If you liked it, great. If you did it, oh well. And uh, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I'll see you later.